What's up everybody, it's Joe with Joseph Blake Photography and in today's video we're going to be talking about some news from this week. We've got a drone coming from Japan and a big firmware update from DJI on one of the mini drones. I'm Joe and this is my channel, Joseph Blake Photography. I'm kind of starting from scratch. Uh, my Facebook account got hacked, I lost it and my Instagram account. My YouTube account got demonetized, my website blew up. Anyway, I am starting fresh and I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you think that this video is any good. If you're interested in following me on Instagram, links down below and let's get into the stories. First things first, we've got a new drone coming from Japan. This is the Soten drone, S -O -T, I think it's Soten. Uh, this drone comes from a company out of Japan. This is an alternative to DJI. This drone isn't necessarily new. Uh, it's been out since 2021, but it is new to the American market. And it is primarily focused towards the enterprise customer for the corporate customer, the defense customer, and comes with some really kind of interesting features like the ability to encrypt uh, photos and video that it has on the camera. And the communication between the drone and the controller are 100% encrypted all the time. Again, this is primarily focused towards the enterprise and corporate customer. One of the features that is really cool on this drone that is big if you are an enterprise corporate customer, if you're doing surveying or inspections or something like that, is that the image module, the camera module can be removed. Uh, it comes with a one inch sensor standard with a 4K video signal coming out of that and you can actually replace it with an IR um, kind of information gathering sensor package. One other kind of interesting and unique feature about this particular drone is that it actually uses LTE technology to communicate, which means that it can, via the internet, uh, actually access the drone and deploy over long range where you might need to send a drone into places where you might be doing search and rescue or surveying where you might not always be able to keep line of sight of the drone with the controller and you can continue to operate the drone. Again, that communication is encrypted and the information on the drone can be encrypted. Similar to the DJI Mini 3 Pro, it also comes with three directional sensing to avoid hitting trees when you are out looking for people. Speaking of the DJI Mini, the DJI Mini 4 uh, just got a big firmware update to add a bunch of new features. The first feature is the Active Shots 360 Auto Mode. Uh, this is a mode that will allow the drone to kind of circle the uh, point of interest or the indicated, uh, whether it's a person or a car or a mountain bike uh, or anything that it needs to follow and it can kind of pick the best position uh, based on uh, what it thinks is going to be the, the best image, hence the auto feature. Next is vision positioning. Now, uh, DJI drones come with little cameras on the side. So when you hear about them talking about having uh, position sensing or obstacle avoidance, normally that is done with these little tiny uh, sensor cameras that are on the sides. They're black and white cameras and together they identify objects that are moving uh, closer to the drone that could potentially be a tree or a house or a person or something that it could bang into and uh, potentially crash. For example, I still fly the DJI Mavic Pro 2 and it has a four camera sensing, I think it's four, maybe five camera sensing system. Um, but hilariously, I've run into trees going side to side all the time, so who knows. The feature here though is the ability to switch between the kind of map view and be able to actually pull up the image that is coming out of those cameras, which is super cool to be able to see kind of what it's seeing. Um, although if you're watching all four cameras and trying to avoid, I, I don't know. Other than this just kind of being cool and novel, let me know down in the comments how you would practically use this uh, if you were using the drone for cinematic shots, let's say, or for exploring to help you not hit a tree, unless you're just watching the tree all the time. In which case, are you flying the drone or are you watching the tree? I don't know, you tell me down in the comments. Additionally, we now have a switch to turn off uh, some of the obstacle avoidance and visual uh, positioning sensors on the drone, which is really nice because sometimes you are in kind of tighter spaces where you know that you're good, uh, but the drone might say, no, nope, I don't wanna go there. 
Uh, for example, trying to go through clouds or trying to land on something that's moving, or really there's a lot of different times where, uh, especially over water, uh, that sensor gets freaked out. You want to be in control. Uh, and so with the ability to turn this off, you can do that. And then you would want to turn that back on when you're ready to land or ready to do anything else where you want those sensors on, again, to avoid hitting a tree. Next is the ability to take that 48 megapixel sensor that we have on the Mini 4 and actually punch in to a 12 megapixel image to be able to do a 3x. It's not really a 3x optical zoom, but it's not really a 3x digital zoom. I guess it is more of an optical zoom. It's a crop. You're effectively cropping for the sake of zoom. Really no different if you were to kind of punch in on a crop mode on a mirrorless camera or on your phone. Also with that 48 megapixel sensor now, you can take those AEB shots differentiated by different, uh, different light levels where you can kind of spread that out and get super high dynamic range images. You can now take up to five of those, whereas previously it was three. You can also do up to five images on the burst mode as well. The Mini 4 now has support for DJI goggles and motion controller too. So if you really wanna use a motion controller to crash your Mini 4 into a tree, when you turn off the obstacle avoidance and positioning system, now you can do that just like the folks who are flying the Avada. I guess they really, more often than not, they just crash into the ground. Anyway, you can also now activate remote ID when using Intelligent Flight Battery Plus, which sounds like a new subscription service from Apple uh, that will cost $14.99 a month. So that's the drone news from the week. We've got, like I said, a new drone from Japan uh, for your corporate and search and rescue surveying enterprise uh, type folks or the Mini 4 from DJI. Super exciting. Let me know down in the comments uh, how often you run your drone into trees. This is as often as mine. I go through a lot of propellers. A lot of propellers. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.